It only takes one comment for me to make a video. I had one person request that I talk about all of the Target collaborations, the past, what's happening now, what's coming out. So I thought that would be kind of fun because I've never really dug that deep into the Target collaborations, but I find them super interesting because really big designers participate in them for fashion and home decor. So I thought we'd kind of dig through that and then go through the collaborations that they have now. And I'm just going to give my opinion on them because that is basically uh, all I do over here on this channel. Um, so yeah, let's get started on today's video of um, my thoughts on Target collaborations. <laughs> I've had to do my due diligence on this uh, video because I'm actually just very interested in the history of these Target collaborations. So let's start off with that. I'll give you a little, little quick rundown. It all started in the late 90s with this one guy named Michael Graves who is an architect or product designer. And he, I guess he was just browsing the, the Target aisles and somehow started having a conversation with one of the Target executives. And one thing led to another and he kind of convinced or pitched this idea of starting Target collaborations. So Graves then sealed the deal in 1999 while we're getting very uh, history oriented. Um, but yeah, I guess he like made a deal with Target and came out with like a small collection of houseware items, which I'm very curious if we can even see. Oh, here he is. Okay, wait, I've totally seen this tea kettle before. I don't know where, but I didn't know that was like the first houseware Target collaboration, Michael Graves. He has cool stuff. They should bring this stuff back. I would definitely buy that tea kettle. He looks like a sweet old man. I always I always wished I had a grandpa like that, you know? I don't have a grandpa. They all they all passed when I was younger. And every time I see like a sweet man, I'm like, oh, a grandpa. So I guess Michael Graves is the guy who kind of paved the path for all of these future Target collaborations where Really expensive designers create something with Target so the general public can buy, buy the stuff. Looks like Graves designed over 500 products with Target and then departed in 2012. Wow, I am very good at my timelines here. Then in 2008, Target had their second collaboration with this handbag designer named Joy Grayson. And I think she was the former director of design for Marc Jacobs. So, wow, wow, wow. Joy Grayson Target 2008. Is that what I said? Let's see these handbags. Oh, wow. A beauty. I like kind of like semi remember these collaborations happening because I feel like my mom was like getting excited. So yeah, I guess this little lady, Joy Grayson, was um, number two. The first one I really remember is their collaboration with Takoon. Then there was Rodarte, which I was like, I remember when they had Rodarte first come out. Um, that was like kind of the first like really runway type. I guess Marc Jacobs kind of was too, but Rodarte to me was like, whoa. Then there was Jason Wu. Jason Wu. All these are pretty huge designers. It's kind of crazy. My favorite to date though is the Lily Pulitzer collab because Lily Pulitzer is... It's interesting. It's almost like vintage now, but I've never been a huge fan of Lily Pulitzer. I really want to see the stuff that came out in like 2015. Ooh, here it is. Lily Pulitzer, the most iconic Target collaboration there ever was. I don't know. I've never just, I've never been a huge fan of Lily Pulitzer, but I will say she kind of started like all this pattern stuff that I really like. Not that I like her patterns, but I don't know whose collab sold the most. I actually probably think it's Joanna Gaines and the Magnolia Home collab, but Lily Pulitzer probably knocked it out of the park as well. Very interesting. Lily Pulitzer towels are kind of cute now that I'm browsing. Oh, look, a little Lily Pulitzer coffee mug. I feel like collecting Target collaborations could be like a new hobby for someone or is a hobby for someone. I feel like Miss Sony is also one of their biggest collaborations because Miss Sony is kind of an iconic, you know, brand. So like you can't really go wrong with Miss Sony. You know 
the zigzag is their thing and it's just what it is. Like, these are cute. Masonia is fun little home, home stuff. Tori Burch is also another huge designer. It's cool that so many designers are like willing to do this, I guess, because then it just makes it fun for all of us. What is this, Tori Burch? This is Tori. Oh, no, that's Diane von Furstenberg. I guess these were all part of the Neiman Marcus collab. Sometimes I do like Tori Burch, actually. Every now and then I like a Tori Burch item. Oh, look at this. Allison Olivia? Who would have thunk? Oh my gosh, Brian Atwood for Target too? Hell yeah. Oh, look at those. A beauty. Even Rag and Bone. I guess this Neiman Marcus collab really brought in a ton of a ton of designers. Oh, that's cute. Look at that. Look, that little flask. Rag and Bone. Oh, those are fun too. Wow, I guess I haven't been paying attention enough to these collaborations. Oscar de la Renta with a little pet bowl. A little, a little pet collar on this weird dog. I feel like Target just has like knocked it out of the park with all of their collaborations. And I know they have some really good ones coming up. And one of the most surprising ones I saw was Rachel Comey. I'm a huge fan of Rachel Comey. Let's see if Rachel Comey is out on the Target. Nope. Okay. So Rachel Comey is coming out. But I do know that Sandy Liang is on there. And I'm also a huge fan of her stuff. They're finding, they're like tapping into really cool like small New York artists and let's take a look really quickly at Sandy Liang's collab for Target because she just has really cool stuff and it's kind of fun that she's coming out with stuff for Target um that's kind of cool I not a huge fan of that okay I like this fleece really fun I guess like what am I expecting for it to be as unique as the stuff that she has on her own website I mean this is all good. This is good. Big fan of hers. Um, wouldn't say I'm like, oh, I need to go buy this, but I like it. Okay, so now that we've kind of talked about the history of Target collaborations and who they've worked with, let's take a look at some of the, the home decor collaborations because that seems fairly new. Well, now that I know um, Michael Graves did the first home decor collab it feels like they put like a halt to it and maybe I'm wrong but it sounds to me like they put a halt to home collaborations and now they've relaunched them and I don't know if Magnolia Home was the first one so let's check out the Magnolia Home Target collab if you've watched my videos you know that I'm not the biggest fan of Magnolia Home but I feel like their Target collaboration really upgraded Target's home decor a ton. She does have good style and a majority of America loves their shit. So let's check out their living room first and see what they got to offer. This is pretty cute. This is cute. That is cute. They're obviously very trendy with the modern farmhouse vibe with the bleached wood. Is bleached wood ever going to go out of style or is it just a trend that's here to stay? I don't know. They have a lot of fake plants I've seen in store as well, which I'm not a huge fan of and they love like a, a good little pillow that has a stripe and a little poof ball on the end. Do I hate it? No. Do people love it? Yes. Do I love it? No. So yeah, this is where Magnolia takes me down that farmhouse rabbit hole that I do not love. Dirty, clean, a reversible sign. What is it saying for? Like laundry? Or the dishes? Whatever. Um, no, that's a no. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. More striped pillows. More little poofies. They love a little poof. Lots of good candles. And honestly, their dishware is pretty good. Let's go to the um, category. Kitchen. This is where I feel like they really accelerate. Okay, my mom has this. Spoon. Yeah. This was, like, huge for Target, I feel like, when Magnolia Home came out with, like, this type of dinnerware. I feel like Target didn't have anything that looked, like, pottery before. So I actually own some dishes kind of similar to that by them. And, yeah, I mean, it's not bad. They really upgraded Target. Now let's check out Studio McGee because what is the difference between Studio McGee and Magnolia Home? I feel like Studio doesn't really have anything that much different. If you showed me their stuff and Magnolia's stuff, I don't know if I'd be able to 
really tell them apart. I guess Magnolia is a little bit more farmhouse. Let's start with their furniture. Yeah, I mean, this is a very nice piece. Like, you could find that on Lulu in Georgia and some other furniture companies. Again, this is all just so trendy, and I feel like Target hasn't done anything different. Like, where are the really unique furniture collaborations like they do with their fashion? Do they offer anything in a dark wood? Is everything bleached or black? Oh, there's a little bit. This is pretty cute, actually. I don't know. Maybe I do like Studio McGee, McGee um, a little bit more than Magnolia. I guess it's like a little bit more modern. This is pretty nice. Let's see their home decor. I feel like a lot of people go to Target for throw pillows. So let's see what they've got here. Yeah, these are fine. Oh, this is a pretty blanket, actually. I really like the texture and the color of this blanket. All right, I'm kind of into Studio McGee. I can't keep saying their name. Studio McGee. I mean, overall, it just looks like Magnolia Home with, like, a little less farmhouse of a twist, I guess. This is cute, actually. That's the thing. Like, you can always find something at Target, regardless of the collaboration. There's something cute. Ugh. Curious on their lighting. Oh, this is a cute little lamp. This Target stuff is coming over into, like, the CB2 realm, which is nice because the prices are a lot cheaper. Now let's check out Jungalow for Target. Jungalow started off as this little, I think it was a blog, actually, this home blog in, I think, Venice, California. I remember when I first moved out to Los Angeles, I actually applied for a job at Jungalo, and they were just like a smaller blog at the time, so that's pretty fun that Target's kind of collaborating with them. Okay, so Opal House is designed with Jungalo. Yes, okay, so Opal House is the Target, like, home brand, and I feel like it's pretty bad, <laughs> but luckily we have these collabs to save us. Let's start off with the throw pillows. Immediately, Jungalo incorporates a lot more color, and it's a lot more fun, and it has a lot of almost, like, tribal prints, so I'm into this already. I wouldn't say it's fully my style, in the way like West Elm, but it's a, it is different than Magnolia and it is different than Studio McGee, which is fun. Every pillow will have a pom-pom on it. No matter who the collaboration is, it's a requirement to have a little like, there's not a pom-pom. It's a, I don't know. I'm blanking. I mean, this is a pretty cute pillow. I like how she uses really bold prints, but again, it's that West Elm vibe, but you know, people freaking love West Elm. It's like bold Venice. Is that what I should describe it as? It's not bo- it's, it is boho. It's bold boho. That's what the jungle is. It's a jungle It's a jungle and a bungalow jungle That's exactly what it is. And her name is Justina Blakeney. Blakeney? Blake- Blakeney? She seems like a nice gal. Here's what I have to say. I like all of Justina's incorporations of- patterns. However, I think it's just the color combinations that aren't my vibe. Like this bedding, for instance, I really like the yellow and the pattern, I guess, is is fun, but the colors are just not something I would really do, I guess. Let's check out some of their furniture. Yeah, it's very trendy furniture. Anthropology mixed with Urban Outfitters mixed with West Elm. It's just going to go out of style, but I guess that's what a collaboration is, you know? Like, get it while it's hot. This is a really pe pretty piece of artwork. I feel like if you're going to buy a piece of art from any, like, giant manufacturer, I guess buy it from when they have a collaboration because it's kind of unique in the sense that it won't be for sale forever. This is pretty, though, and this is actually really pretty colors. I like this piece of art. Who is Justina Blakeney? Blakeney. Let's uh, let's read about her because she looks awesome. Like she looks like a really cool person. She's the founder and creative director of Jungalo. She's written books. She has hand painted artwork. She has home decor, and she just did this new collaboration with Target. She lives in Los Angeles. Like I said, I like her. I think she has the most unique collaboration in the home department at Target.
I mean, I'm definitely I like all of her art. It's it's allowing people to bring color into their homes and it's just different. I mean, she started her blog years and years and years ago and her style has always been very consistent. So it's very beachy. It's very bold, bold patterns, bold colors. So if you're looking to incorporate a little bit of that in your home, I would go check out the jungle. Oh, look at this. This is fun. Target's really, what is Target? Why is Target so good? Why, why do we all have to love Target? Why couldn't, why couldn't I just be the one person that's like, I hate Target. I hate everything they do, but they do cool stuff. They're making really expensive home decor or fashion affordable to, you know, us, us, us regular people, you know, us regular people now get to afford things. I'm quoting my thing from Daniel Bernstein's video. If you haven't watched that, go check that out. All right. Well, this was a fun Sunday video. Or no, this is Wednesday. I made a Wednesday video, people. Sorry I haven't been able to show the goo in a bit. Uh, she's been staying at my parents, and I kind of just come here to film. I'm not living here currently. I'm living at my parents. And I officially rented out this place. So beginning of March, my first renter will be living in my little renovated one bedroom office. I'm very sad to leave, but I'm excited to go at the same time. I'm actually going to LA for three months. And then I think I'm going to go to London for three months. So if you know anyone in London that rents out their spot, I'm currently looking, send me a DM. And yeah. Oh, and lastly, I'm going to do another subscriber home review. So if you're interested in having your home reviewed and it includes like tips and suggestions as well, um, send it to highpagewassel at gmail.com. It's going to be coming out next week or the week after. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know if I'm going to post one video. We don't know if I'm going to post two videos. We don't even know if I'm going to post. No, I feel like I've been pretty consistent except, you know, for the past few weeks because I've been having my mental breakdown. But I'm I'm uh, I'm feeling better. So no need to worry. The goo is alive. Everyone is well. And um, I will see everybody in sunny Los Angeles starting at the end of February. Until then, I will be filming here. So I will see you on Sunday. Goodbye.